Today's video is inspired by the just absolutely lovely, fantastic, soothing goddess that is Julia Adams. If you don't follow her on YouTube, what are you doing? She is amazing. And I love the idea of sharing your top three favorite products in each makeup category. So often when I do like a one of each category, I feel like it's so hard to get like a really clear picture of what I actually like in makeup, I think, because to narrow it down to just one, I mean, there's no one category where there's just one product that could last me all year and I would never change it around. So I love the idea of narrowing it down just to three rather than to one. So thank you, Julia, for the idea. And let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna go straight from primer sunscreen all the way to lip liners, lipsticks, and lip glosses. If your makeup routine is your favorite ritual, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm here three times a week sharing my beauty habit with you. First, let's talk primers. I prefer to go with like a moisturizer in general. So I'm gonna share with you my favorite products to just prep my skin, the ones I use right before sunscreen. The first is the Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. This is such a fantastic, moisturizer primer in one. It always preps my skin beautifully for makeup. It's actually what I wear almost every day under my makeup right before sunscreen. It just feels so lovely. It has a nice slip to it. It gives you a nice like natural glow and it has skincare benefits as well. Number two, and none of my top three are, are in any order. These are just my three favorite. I cannot possibly rank them. Please do not ask that of me. So number two is the Renee Rello Glow Enhancing Cream. This is my favorite under makeup moisturizer. Moisturizer. I often use it as my primer. It gives a really nice glow. It's a perfect medium weight moisturizer. And this is what I use on days where I need a little bit more moisture in my skin. Maybe my skin's feeling a little bit dehydrated or a little more dry than normal. That's when I will pull this out and use it as my primer. Number three is from Rodeal, and this is the Instant Glow Primer. This is the primer I like to use on days where I'm having like a really fantastic skin day and I wanna look super luminous, super glowy, like I just wanna go for it, but I don't need any extra moisture on top of like the moisturizer I put on in the morning. That's when I will use this from Rodeal. It has this beautiful like apricot glow to it. It's just a really nice glowy primer. It has a nice little bit of slip to it. It's got some nice moisturizing to it, and it definitely gives you a very bumped up glow for days that you want to look super luminous from within. Also, it smells fantastic. Oh my God, it smells so good. I don't know what the smell is. It's like bubble gum, but if bubble gum didn't smell too sweet, that's what this smells like. The next step is for me, sunscreen, especially if I used a moisturizer to prime, I will then put a sunscreen on. So I'm gonna share with you my favorite sunscreens to go under makeup. The first one is from Elta MD. This is their UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46 sunscreen. This is like my holy grail of sunscreens. It is fantastic. It doesn't leave a white cast. It blends into the skin really nice. It doesn't sting my eyes. It doesn't have too much of a sunscreen smell. It's a really good like skincare dermatologist recommended. That's who actually recommended this to me sunscreen. And so that's like my go to sunscreen. Now on days that I want a little bit more glow, say I didn't use a glowy primer, but I want to look extra glowy. I will go in with the super goop glow screen. This is an SPF of 40. I really like this. It does play really well under your foundation and it has a nice little bit of glow too. It. There is a little bit of tint as you can see. So if you have a little bit deeper skin than I do, I don't know how well this would really work. I love it. It just makes me want to slather myself in sunscreen, which I do anyway. But you know what? If you have to, let's at least make it pretty. Last but not least, number three sunscreen is the Clinique Pep Start. This is an SPF of 50, and this is what I use on days that I want a little bit of a tint to my sunscreen. This one's actually really beautiful without any makeup, but it still does look nice under makeup. Maybe if you're going with like a tinted moisturizer or something like that. And to me, it actually ends up kind of blurring my skin a little bit, which I really appreciate. For foundation, my top three foundations are really probably not going to surprise anyone who's been here before. First of all, let's talk about the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue. At my palest, I wear the shade 1N0. If I am self-tanned, I wear the shade 2N1. Today, obviously, I would be in this shade. That's not what I'm wearing, but this is the shade I would be in the one N0 porcelain. It's such a good foundation. It is a nice like medium 
coverage where you can still see the skin, but you have some blurring. It never sticks to dry patches. It never makes me look crusty anywhere. It wears beautifully throughout the day. It has the most beautiful radiant finish. This is actually my favorite foundation of 2020. And there's a reason, it's just absolutely fantastic. I pulled it out the other day and I was like, oh my God, where have you been? I have missed you. Cause I've been trying other foundations and I haven't worn it in a couple weeks. And I just like immediately when I put it on, I was like, oh my gosh, I look lovely. And that's what we want makeup to do. Number two, we're gonna talk about the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. This is a really good foundation, you guys. I wear the shade 110 Alabaster. This is like a really good shade match for me. If you are as fair as I am, maybe you feel like you're a little bit fair. Although I swear you guys, I think maybe I look darker on camera than I actually am. I promise you when I tell you, like I am like translucent, you guys. Like I am very pale. I don't know if it's like the Scott in me. Like sometimes my cheeks are ruddy. Maybe that makes me look like I'm a little darker than I am. So this is a really great shade match if you're someone who is very fair and very neutral. It is a fantastic medium finish. It is so beautiful on the skin. It wears amazingly throughout the day. And if you need to touch it up, if you get dry spots, this is super, super easy to refresh. Like you can just kind of tap it out with like a very lightly damp sponge and you can refresh it so easily. So this is just an awesome foundation to have in your wardrobe. Is that a thing we're doing now? We're calling it a foundation wardrobe. I've heard that a lot recently. So I guess that's what we're calling it. Number three, last but not least in the foundation category is my favorite foundation of all time, Armani Luminous Silk. I wear the shade 1.5. I am not gonna like ramble on about this one. I just have to say, every time I describe why this is my favorite foundation, I say the same thing, which is no matter what, whether I'm having the best skin day of my life or the absolute worst skin day of my life, this foundation never ever makes me look worse. It always makes me look better. It cannot solve all my problems. You know, if I'm really congested along the T-zone and I have like some enlarged pores and some blackheads and some dry patches and some texture, it doesn't erase it, but there are so many foundations that make those things look worse and emphasize them. This one never does. It always leaves my face looking better than it found it. And that is why it is so many people's holy grails because it is just a really freaking good foundation if you have drier skin or even normal skin. Now for the concealer category, which is a really fun one because my under eyes are some of the, I think, driest under eyes in the world. So concealers really have to go through it for me to recommend them. The first one I wanna talk about is from Shiseido. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. I wear the shade 01 Fair. This does work for me whether I am self tanned or not. This is such a fantastic concealer if you have dry under eyes. If you're like me and you have like little baby creases because your eyes are a little deeper set, this is also another really good one because you can very easily tap this out to refresh it and it will get rid of any little crease that you might have, which let's be honest, if you have these natural creases under your eyes like I do, it is inevitable that at some point throughout the day, your concealer is going to separate into those. So being able to easily refresh that concealer is huge. This also never dries me out. It feels really, really comfortable under the eyes and the shade is really fantastic and brightening, which is what I want in an under eye concealer. Next up, we have my Holy Grail concealer. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I use two different shades depending on whether or not I I am self-tanned or not. Today, not self-tanned, I would use Chantilly, and actually this is the concealer that I use today. And on days that I do have a self-tan, I use the shade Vanilla. I love the shade range of this creamy concealer because for me to be able to have like so many different nuanced shades, I think it's fantastic. I don't know what the deeper end of the spectrum looks like from NARS, but I do know that on the fair side, they have such a good color range. And when I have tried to dupe this concealer out for people, what I find I most often get hung up on is the shade. It is very hard for me to find shades in other concealers that very closely mimic, especially vanilla, which I think is such a good under eye concealer shade. If you're light, it's just fantastic. This does not really crease up on me. It feels soft, natural under the eyes. It doesn't dry me out. It doesn't get crusty on the inner corner of my eye. That's something to watch out for. If you have dry under eyes, that's how I always know a concealer is a no-go for me is at the end of the day, I might have like a little crusty right here. <laughs> that does not do this. Last but not least, we have from Hourglass, their Vanish Concealer. This is in the shade Birch. This is another shade that is so good. If you are super fair, say you're even fairer than I am, this shade is really fantastic. It is so 
so, so light. It's one of the lightest concealers that I own and it is nice and neutral. I also just love the finish and the way it feels. It's substantial enough to where I feel like I can really cover. Like if I am super blue under here, if my allergies are really acting up because the skin is so thin under there and I am so pale, this covers really well. I would say it has more coverage than both the NARS and the Shiseido concealers, but it doesn't dry me out and it doesn't crease up and it is easy to retouch throughout the day. The way I retouch this one is just with like a sponge like this. I would just go in and retouch it that way if it does end up getting in that little baby crease that I have. Next up we have powder. So the first is my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in the shade Fair. This is just my go-to powder at this point. It is so finely milled. It is such an amazing powder. It blurs everywhere you put it. It does not feel drying and a little bit goes a long way. I use this daily almost and one of these can last me like six months with daily use. The second one is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Invisible Silk Loose Powder in the shade Radiant. This is my favorite like radiant loose powder at this point. I love the function of it. It has like a little cheesecloth kind of thing where you can just tap your brush in there. It's not messy. That really cuts down on the mess having that there. It gives a beautiful finish that's a little bit more radiant than the Charlotte Tilbury. So the Charlotte Tilbury, I generally just use like in the T-zone or to set my under eyes. I don't really use it like here on the cheeks, but if I am gonna use like a powder blush or bronzer and I wanna lay something down first, I will go in with this loose powder because it's more radiant. So it just looks a little bit more like the finish that I tend to like, which is a more luminous finish. So I love that. And then the last one is the Chanel Les Beiges Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. I have the shade number 10. This is my favorite, just like throw it in my purse and use it as a touch up powder. I sometimes use the Charlotte Tilbury one for that, but sometimes I don't like to use this one just because like say I only put it here. If I wanna like go touch that area up, it generally already still has the blurring going on. And sometimes I notice that because I am drier, it can almost look cakey if I go in and touch up too much with this. So I much prefer to go in and touch up with this one from Chanel because it's just nice and light. It's kind of just like an all purpose pressed powder. Also, it's one of the few products that has a fragrance that I actually like. And I know that sounds crazy. I generally don't like for things to have fragrance. I think it smells light enough that it's kind of refreshing versus being overpowering. Next up, let's talk contour. And I did break contour and bronzer into two separate categories, although there's a tiny bit of overlap. We'll get to that in a minute. The first one I wanna talk about is from Westman Atelier. This is their Face Trace Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. I absolutely love this contour. This is my favorite cream contour shade. It is so fantastic. It looks like the perfect natural shadow, which is what you want in like a true contour, right? Right. Also, the formula is very emollient. It's very intuitive to use. They put it in a stick and you can apply it like a stick. I mean, go in very light handed because a little bit goes a long way because it, again, it's emollient so it melts into the skin very quickly. But I love that the product is intuitive. They have such nice packaging, Westman Atelier does. I just love like the matte black. It's very luxurious. It's a high price point, but they really deliver. Next up, I have a powder contour. This is the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. I love this. You get so many different shades and that really helps me out. Although I will say one of them is a highlight shade. That's not really a highlight shade for me because I am so pale, but having all these contour shades for me is fantastic because since I do sometimes self tan and other times I don't, I can kind of mix and match the shades to get the contour that I want. Also, this is very buildable. You can really build it up. You can go in very light with like a loose brush. I tend to like to use a very loose brush like this one from Real Techniques. Shout out to Real Techniques. They just like like drugstore prices, fantastic brushes, I love them. But if you use like a really loose brush like this, you can really just pick up a little bit at a time and build up and get like the perfect contour for you. It's a really nice formula. It looks really nice on the skin. It doesn't look drying. It doesn't look patchy. It blends very lovely. In a powder product, I'm pretty dang picky. I'm so used to cream products at this point that my blending standards are high. The last product in the contour category is from Patrick Ta. This is the Cream Contour and powder bronzer duo in she's statuesque up here on the top we have the contour this is the cream contour this is the perfect cream contour shade for a fair person it is fantastic it looks shadowy the formula of the cream itself is emollient it's blendable it looks fantastic it doesn't drag it doesn't skip it is just so good bonus you get this fantastic bronzer shade which is an absolutely 
beautiful, wonderful formula, wonderful shade powder bronzer for someone fair like me. I'm just obsessed with this. This has become a favorite immediately. We've got a favorite contour here and then favorite bronzer. It's a double whammy. It's a two for one, a BOGO if you will. If you have not gotten this Patrick Ta duo yet, do yourself a favor because it is so fantastic. The next bronzer on my list is a cream bronzer and I don't think there's any cream bronzer that can ever take the place of this product. It is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel and they don't make it anymore, you guys. It hurts me, it hurts me. I have not yet tried. They reformulated this. They've repackaged it. It looks basically the same, but the formula is different. And I just, I am holding out hope that they're gonna come to their senses and give us this one back. I don't think it's gonna happen, but this has been a favorite of mine for so long and it just hurts me that they did that. So I actually have a backup of this, but I know that at some point I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and just try the new one. That day is not today though. Another favorite bronzer is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze in Glow. I adore this bronzer. It is so light and buildable. I love the finish of it. It's got just a touch of radiance. It's not glowy. It doesn't look sparkly. It just doesn't look like a flat matte. So it really gives some life and some dimension to the face and I appreciate that. I actually talked about this recently in a full face of Charlotte Tilbury products about how I didn't like this at first, but it has really grown on me and I just adore it now. I think it is probably forever going to be one of my favorite bronzers. The next category is very competitive and it was very difficult for me, but I want to preface this by saying that these are my three favorites like right now. These could change as I heard Jamie Page say when she did this video as well. But anyway, <laughs> obviously I'm having like anxiety about choosing. Anyway, my three favorite cream bronzers right now, I narrowed it down to the three that I just find myself reaching for the most. And the first is from Melt. This is the Cream Blush Light in the shade Polished. This is a grapefruit shade and it's absolutely beautiful. It looks so flattering on my skin tone and I love that the finish is so luminous. These are really fantastic blushes. I have a couple different shades. They blend out beautifully, they're long wearing, and they do give a nice natural luminous finish. Next up, from Rare Beauty, I have Nearly Apricot. I love this. This is like my go-to corally shade right now. It is so beautiful. And the Rare Beauty formula is another one that is just, I mean, it's so fantastic. It melts, it blends. It's just absolutely gorgeous. When you put it on your cheeks, it's just like the most natural flush. And last but not least from Westman Atelier, we have the Baby Cheeks Blush Stick. This is the shade Pop It. It is so beautiful. Obviously, once you blend it out, it's not that bright, but it is the most beautiful poppy shade. I absolutely love this for when I want like a super pop of color, like a bright cheek. This just looks so fantastic, especially on fair skin. And I think this is a shade that could look really good on tan and deep skin as well. I think it's just a really good shade if you're someone that is more like neutral to cool on the undertone spectrum, this is a fantastic shade. The next category is not quite as contentious as the cream blush category. It is the powder blush category. We're gonna start off straight Strong. This is the Jouer Cheeky Summer Blush Duo. I absolutely love this blush duo. It is so beautiful. It's got like a nice luminous finish to it. This is fantastic for summer. It makes your cheeks look really radiant, really naturally flush, and you can kind of mix and match the shades around. I really love these for like draping onto the hollows of my cheek. I love this duo and they do still sell it, which is great because I literally just broke it. You guys, I have been breaking powder blushes left and right lately. I do not know what is going on, but that is no less than the third powder blush that I have broken in the past week, which never happens to me. So thank you, Mercury Retrograde. Next up from Clinique, we have the Cheek Pop in Melon Pop. I love this for going over like my corally apricot shade blushes. Like if I want to double blush, do like a cream and then a powder. It's also really good for like a light makeup day where I want to use a powder blush. And then last but not least, I have been reaching for this one a lot from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the Cheek to Chic Blush in the shade First Love. It is just the softest, barely there, baby peachy pink. I think it's really fantastic for if you're going with like a bolder eye and a bolder lip and you really want to tone down the cheeks just for balance, this is a really lovely shade for that. Highlighters. I tried to decide if I wanted to break these up between powder and not powder and I decided yes, why not? So first we're going to go with 
creams. The first one is from Say. This is the Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. I recently got this. I absolutely love it. I compare it to my second favorite, which is the Armani Fluid Sheer in the shade number two. Both of them are just so beautiful. They're fantastic if you're doing like a full face of cream. Right here is the Super Glowy Gel, and then over here is the Fluid Sheer. These are so beautiful over like a full cream look, or I like to put them on the high points of my cheeks and the high points of my face, like down the nose. Before I put on my foundation, they both sit really well under there. And another one that I like to use the exact same way is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter in the shade number two, Light. So you'll see this one is very similar to like the shade of the Fluid Sheer, but it's a little bit more peachy. I can't really tell you what makes me choose one of the other on any given day. I think that they're all really comparable. So decide if you wanna go with like, you want more product at a more affordable price point, go with the Say Super Glowy Gel because you get a full fluid ounce for $25, which is just fantastic. If you want something that has the convenience of a doe foot applicator, you could go with the Charlotte Tilbury because you have you know that doe foot applicator so you can do it without as much of the mess as you're gonna get from the Fluid Sheer. If you just wanna be really luxurious, then you can pick up the Armani. For powder highlight, the first is just a classic. It is MAC Soft and Gentle. I've gone through so many of them over the years. It's just such a staple. I love that it's this beautiful like pinky light champagne. It's a fantastic shade and it really does give the most beautiful pearlescent finish. It never looks too like stark or crazy. It's just really nice and soft, almost like a candlelit glow. Then I have from Dior. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. I love, again, that you can just mix and match. The shade I use most often is this like light pink one. I think it's just so beautiful and it looks really nice on the cheeks, but I do go into this one. I also love these because you can use them kind of as a blush. It's a really nice little face quad and I do tend to reach for this quite a bit and I almost always put it in my travel makeup bag. So that's how I tend to know that something is a favorite. Last but not least, we have one of the Hourglass highlighters. This is the Lighting Edit Ghost Palette. This is just the one that has my favorite highlighter from Hourglass in it, which is the Strobe Powder in Iridescent Strobe Light. It's very soft, very candlelit. I would say very similar to the Soft and Gentle. It's probably a little bit more of a luxurious finish, but they're both pretty comparable. So I would say if you love Soft and Gentle, you might wanna try that one from Hourglass because it is pretty close. Next, we have my three favorite one and done shadows. So the first is gonna be the Caviar Stick from Laura Mercier. You can see it's just a beautiful lavender taupe mixed with a hint of purple. I find it to be so beautiful as a one and done shade. It has a lot of metallic finish, so you get a lot of dimension from it. The second one is, oh my gosh, recent discovery, and I'm obsessed with it. It's from Armani. It is their liquid eyeshadow in the shade Camel Smoke. This is such a beautiful, like sophisticated matte one and done shadow. If you just wanna add a little bit of shape to the eye, but you're not really trying to be like any kind of like reflectivity, you just want a really nice polished natural look. That's fantastic shade for that. And then last but not least, this is one that I fell in love with last year. This is the cream and powder eye color from Tom Ford in the shade Golden Peach. And specifically, I love the cream shadow that comes in this. It is so, so beautiful. It's like a peachy rose gold. It is such a good one and done shadow, especially for this season as we're going into summer. I think that's why I keep going back for it now. I also wanted to share my three favorite current eyeshadow palettes. I don't use eyeshadow palettes a ton. I definitely go for one and done shadows and cream shadows more often. But the ones I'm loving right now, the first is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is her luxury palette in the Sophisticate. This is fantastic if you really like a matte, very natural kind of look, just a classic eyeshadow look. This is so fantastic for that. The shades are soft, they're blendable, they're buildable. It's what I like to reach for at this point if I'm just looking for like a very soft matte look and I wanna look like very polished and elegant and I don't wanna any kind of like luminous going on on the eyes. My next favorite palette right now is from Natasha Denona. This is the gold palette. In the summer, I start to reach for this because these are like these beautiful gold tones that feel very summery to me, but they still have a hint of coolness to them. So I feel like I can wear them and not have to worry about like self tanning as much. I can be a little bit more my authentic pale self, but it's worth it. I have had this for a year and a half. It's one of the few palettes I actually think to myself, oh, I wanna use that palette today. 
day. A lot of my palettes, they just sit there and I forget that they exist, not this one. Number three is brand new. This is the Zendo palette, you guys. I love this and it made it onto my favorites because I'm so excited to keep playing with this. These shades are fantastic and Natasha Denona's formula is always flawless. We have made it to lips, you guys. So let's talk lip liner. The first is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lip liner. This is just a classic, really good lip liner for when you wanna do like a nude, pinky nude lip, if you will. The second one is from Bite Beauty. This is number 70. This is the lip pencil I tend to go for on days where I'm gonna do like a coral or a bright pink look. Last but not least, this is from ColourPop. This is the shade Lumiere. This is my favorite lip liner I think of all time. It is this beautiful mauve shade. It is just absolutely fantastic. Narrowing down to my three favorite lipsticks right now was extremely difficult, but I managed to do it. So first on the list is of course, Mac Faux, like how could we not have Mac Faux on there? It is my perfect favorite like pinky nude with a hint of mob shade. I just love it. Next up from Tom Ford, I have the shade Pussycat. This has quickly grown on me. It reminds me a lot of the tone of Faux, but it's just a little bit deeper. It is so beautiful and I have loved wearing this with then like a milky pink gloss on top of it. That's been like my go-to lip. And then the third is the one that I'm wearing today. This is Empire from Tom Ford. I have it on, it's just, bold. It's like, to me, this is like the perfect summer red lipstick. I absolutely love it. It's like if coral and red had a baby and then like pink was somewhere in there. I don't know how that would work. And I don't, why am I picturing this? Ugh. This lipstick is beautiful. So just hello. I'm obsessed with this. The final category is lip gloss. So the first one I've talked about in a couple videos recently is the Westman Atelier, their balm gloss. And I have the shade Chet. That is my favorite. It's like this beautiful lip light milky shade, like light milky pink shade. That one is fantastic. I feel like that's the shade that like I'm gonna keep reaching for just because it goes so well over all those pinky nude shades that I love wearing. And then the last two I have, they're both like one and done lip colors. So the first one is from Dose of Colors. This is the shade Messy Bun. It's just a really fantastic mauve pinky shade. I love wearing this on its own. It is super beautiful. It's really great if you're around my skin tone. It is very flattering. And then this one from Dior. This is the shade Dior Fire in the Dior Addict Stellar Gloss. I love this formula. It is so weighty. It's almost balm-like and it has such amazing color payoff. It's fantastic. It sits out on my vanity because if I want like a nice bold lip, but I don't want the commitment of a lipstick, I will pull this guy out and it is fantastic. If you love videos like this, favorites videos, roundup videos, be sure to check out my favorites playlist. I will link that here on the screen. I hope to see you over there. Until then, you take care of yourself. Bye.